Accomplished Facts by Carl Sandburg. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Drake. Every year Emily Dickinson sent one friend the first arbutus bud in her garden. In a last will and testament, Andrew Jackson remembered a friend with the gift of George Washington's pocket spyglass. Napoleon, too, in the last testament, mentioned a silver watch taken from the bedroom of Frederick the Great, and passed along this trophy to a particular friend. O. Henry took a blood carnation from his coat lapel and handed it to a country girl starting work in a bean bazaar, and scribbled, Peach blossoms may or may not stay pink in city dust. So it goes. Some things we buy, some not. Tom Jefferson was proud of his radishes, and Abe Lincoln blackened his own boots, and Bismarck called Berlin a wilderness of brick and newspapers. So it goes. There are accomplished facts. Ride, ride, ride on in the great new blimps. Cross unheard of oceans. Circle the planet. When you come back, we may sit by five hollyhocks. We may listen to boys fighting for marbles. The grasshopper will look good to us. So it goes. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. All in Green, My Love When Writing by E. E. Cummings Read for LibriVox.org by Christina Chu All in green went my love riding On a great horse of gold into the silver dawn Four lean hounds crouched low and smiling The merry deer ran before Fleeter be they than dappled dreams The swift sweet deer, the red rare deer Horn a hip went my love riding Riding the echo down into the silver dawn Falling hounds crouched low and smiling, the level meadows ran before. Softer be they than slipper sleep, the lean lithe deer, the flea flown deer. For flea does at a gold valley, the famished arrows sand before. Bow up belt when my love riding, riding the mountain down into the silver dawn. Falling hounds crouched low and smiling, the sure peaks ran before. Paler be they than daunting death, the sleek slim deer, the tall tense deer. Four tall stags at the green mountain, the lucky hunter sang before. All in green when my love riding on a great horse of gold into the silver dawn. Falling hounds crouched low and smiling, my heart fell dead before. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. April by Lewis Ginsberg. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Drake. Even when all my body sleeps, I shall remember yet the wistfulness that April keeps when boughs at dusk are wet, the haunted twilight on the lane, the far-off cricket's croon, and beautiful and washed by rain the mellow rounded moon. So, underneath the waving grass and underneath the dew, April, whenever you pass, my dust will dream of you. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Be a Friend by Edgar Guest Read for LibriVox.org by Robin Cotter Toronto, Ontario, September 2006 Be a Friend You don't need money, just a disposition sunny just the wish to help another get along some way or other just a kindly hand extended out to one who's unbefriended just the will to give or lend 
This will make you someone's friend. Be a friend. You don't need glory. Friendship is a simple story. Pass by trifling errors blindly. Gaze on honest effort kindly. Cheer the youth who's bravely trying. Pity him who's sadly sighing. Just a little labor spend on the duties of a friend. Be a friend. The pay is bigger, though not written by a figure. Then is earned by people clever in what's merely self-endeavor. You'll have friends instead of neighbors for the profits of your labors. You'll be richer in the end than a prince if you're a friend. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Buffalo Bills by E. E. Cummings Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Drake Buffalo Bills defunct, who used to ride a water-smooth silver stallion, and break one, two, three, four, five pigeons just like that. Jesus, he was a handsome man. And what I want to know is, how do you like your blue-eyed boy, Mr. Death? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Buffalo Bills by E. e. Cummings Read for LibriVox.org by Christina Chu Buffalo Bills defunct, who used to ride a water-smooth silver stallion and break one, two, three, four, five pigeons just like that. Jesus, he was a handsome man, and what I want to know is, how do you like your blue-dyed boy, Mr. Death? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Enough by Tom Masson. Read for LibriVox.org I shot a rocket in the air. It fell to earth I knew not where. Until next day with rage profound, the man it fell on came around. In less time than it takes to tell, he showed me where that rocket fell. And now I do not greatly care to shoot more rockets in the air. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Face on the Barroom Floor by H. A. Darcy, read for LibriVox.org by Glenn Hallstrom, a.k.a. Smokestack Jones, smokestackjones at gmail.com. You'll find my website at toomuchjohnson.blogspot.com. T'was a balmy summer evening, and a goodly crowd was there, which well nigh filled Joe's barroom at the corner of the square, and as songs and witty stories came through the open door, a vagabond crept slowly in and poised upon the floor. "'Where did it come from?' someone said. "'The wind has blown it in.' "'What does it want?' another cried. "'Some whiskey, rum, or gin?' "'Ere, tall be sick him, if your stomach's equal to the work. "'I wouldn't touch him with a fork. He's filthy as a Turk.' "'This bandage the poor wretch took with stoic social grace. "'In fact, he smiles, as though he thought he struck the proper place. "'Come, boys, I know there's kindly hearts among so good a crowd. "'To be in such good company would make a deacon proud.' Give me a drink. That's what I want. I'm out of funds, you know. When I had cash to treat the gang, his hand was never slow. What? You laugh as though you thought this pocket never held a sou. I once was fixed as well, me boys, as any one of you. Here, <coughs> thanks. That's braced me up nicely. God bless you, one and all. Next time I pass this good saloon, I'll make another call. Give you a song? No, can't do that. Me singing days are past. Me voice is cracked. Me throat's worn out. Me lungs are going fast. Say, give me another whiskey, and I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you a funny story, and a fact, I'll promise, too, that I ever was a decent man, not one of you would think. But I was some four or five years back. Say, give me another drink. Fill her up, Joe. I want to put some life into me frame. Such little drinks to a bum like me are miserably tame. 
Five fingers here, that's the scheme, and cark and whiskey, too. Well, here's luck, boys, and landlord, my best regards to you. You've treated me pretty kindly, and I'd like to tell you how I came to be the dirty sot you see before you now. As I told you once, I was a man with muscle frame and health, and but a blunder ought to have been made considerable wealth. I was a painter, not one that daubed in bricks and wood, but an artist, for my age, was rated pretty good. I worked hard at me canvas, and was bidding fair to rise, for gradually I saw the star of fame before me eyes. I made a picture, perhaps you've seen, tis called The Chase of Fame. It brought me fifteen thousand pounds and added to me name. And then I met a woman, now here comes the funny part, with eyes that petrified me brain and sunk into me heart. Why don't you laugh? Tis funny that the vagabond you see could ever love a woman and expect her to love me, but twas so, and for a month or two her smiles were freely given, and then her loving lips touched mine, and it carried me to heaven. Boys, did you ever see a woman for whom your soul you'd give with a form like the Milo Venus too beautiful to live, with eyes that would beat the Kuanar, and a wealth of chestnut hair? If so, was she, for there never was another half so fair. I was working on a portrait one afternoon in May of a fair-haired boy, a friend of mine, who lived across the way, and Madeline admired her, much to my surprise, said that she'd like to know the man who had such dreamy eyes. It didn't take long to know him, and before the month had flown, me friend had stole me, darling, and I was left alone. And ere a year of misery had passed about me head, the jewel I had treasured so had tarnished and was dead. That's why I took the drink, boys. Why, I never saw you smile. I thought you'd be amused and laughing all the while. Why, what's the matter, friend? There's a tear drop in your eye. Come, laugh like me. Tis only babies and women that should cry. Say, boys, if you give me just another whiskey, I'll be glad, and I'll draw right here a picture of the face that drove me mad. Give me that piece of chalk with which you mark the baseball scar. You shall see the lovely Madeline upon the barroom floor. Another drink, and with chalk in hand, the vagabond began to sketch a face that might buy the soul of any man. Then as he placed another lock upon the shapely head, with a fearful shriek, he leaped and fell across the picture, dead. End of The Face on the Barroom Floor by H. A. Darcy He and She by Iron Quill Read for LibriVox.org When I am dead, you'll find it hard, said he, to ever find another man like me. What makes you think, as I suppose you do, I'd ever want another man like you? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. I have found what you're like, by E. E. Cummings, read for LibriVox.org, by Christina Chu. I have found what you're like, the rain, who feathers frightened fields with the superior dust of sleep, wields easily the pale club of the wind, and swirl justly souls of flower, strike the air in utterable coolness. Deeds of grand thrilling light, with thin new fragile yellows, lurch and press, in the woods which stutter and sing, and the coolness of your smile is stirring of birds between my arms, but I should rather than anything have, almost when hugeness will shut quietly, almost, your kiss. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. I Remember, I Remember by Thomas Hood Read for LibriVox by Andy Minter I remember, I remember the house where I was born, the little window where the sun came peeping in at morn, he never came a wink too soon, nor brought too long a day. But now I often wish the night had borne my breath away. 
I remember, I remember the roses, red and white, the violets and the lily cups, those flowers made of light, the lilacs where the robin built, and where my brother set the laburnum on his birthday. The tree is living yet. I remember, I remember, where I was used to swing, and thought the air must rush as fresh to swallows on the wing. My spirit flew in feathers then, that is so heavy now, and summer pools could hardly cool the fever on my brow. I remember, I remember, the fir-trees dark and high. I used to think their slender tops were close against the sky. It was a childish ignorance, but now tis little joy to know I'm further off from heaven than when I was a boy. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. It may not always be so, and I say, by E. E. Cummings, read for LibriVox.org by Christina Chu. It may not always be so, and I say, that if your lips, which I have loved, should touch another's, and your dear strong fingers clutch his heart, as mine in time not far away, if. On another's face, your sweet hair lay in such a silence as I know, or such great rising words as uttering overmuch, stand helplessly before the spirit at bay. If this should be, I say, if this should be, you of my heart, send me a little word, that I may go unto him and take his hands, saying, accept. All happiness from me. Then shall I turn my face and hear one bird sing terribly afar in the lost lands. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lawyers Know Too Much by Carl Sandburg. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Drake The lawyers, Bob, know too much. They are chums of the books of old John Marshall. They know it all. What a dead hand wrote, a stiff dead hand and its knuckles crumbling. The bones of the fingers a thin white ash. The lawyers know a dead man's thoughts too well. In the heels of the higgling lawyers, Bob, too many slippery ifs and buts and howevers. Too much herein before provided whereas. Too many doors to go in and out of. When the lawyers are through, what is there left, Bob? Can a mouse nibble at it and find enough to fasten a tooth in? Why is there always a secret singing when the lawyer cashes in? Why does a hearse-horse snicker hauling a lawyer away? The work of a bricklayer goes to the blue. The knack of a mason outlasts a moon. The hands of a plasterer hold a room together. The land of a farmer wishes him back again. The singers of songs and dreamers of plays build a house no wind blows over. The lawyers. Tell me why a hearse horse snickers hauling a lawyer's bones. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. O oh, Sweet Spontaneous by E. E. Cummings. Read for LibriVox.org by Christina Chu. O oh, Sweet Spontaneous Earth, how often have the doting fingers of purine philosophers pinched and poked thee, as a naughty thumb of science prodded thy beauty. How often have religions taken thee upon their scratchy knees, squeezing and buffeting thee, that thou mightest conceive gods, but true to the incomparable couch of death, thy rhythmic lover, thou answerest them only with spring. 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. October's Bright Blue Weather by Helen Hunt Jackson. Read for LibriVox.org by Robin Cotter, Toronto, Ontario, October 2006. O oh, suns and skies and clouds of June, And flowers of June together, Ye cannot rival for one hour October's bright blue weather. When loud the bumblebee makes haste, Belated, thriftless, vagrant, And goldenrod is dying fast, And lanes with grapes are fragrant, When gentians roll their fringes tight To save them for the morning, and chestnuts fall from satin burrs without a sound of warning. When on the ground red apples lie in piles like jewels shining, and redder still on old stone walls are leaves of woodbine twining. When all the lovely wayside things their white-winged seeds are sowing, and in the fields still green and fair late aftermaths are growing. When springs run low, and on the brooks, In idle golden freighting, Bright leaves sink noiseless in the hush Of woods for winter waiting. When comrades seek sweet country haunts By twos and threes together, And count like misers hour by hour October's bright blue weather. O oh, suns and skies and flowers of June, Count all your boasts together, Love loveth best of all the year, October's bright blue weather. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Sky Was by E. E. Cummings. Read for LibriVox.org by Christina Chu. The sky was candy luminous, edible spry, pinks, shy lemons, greens, cool chocolates, under a locomotive spouting violets. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. This is a garden, colors come and go, by E. Cummings, read for LibriVox.org, by Christina Chu. This is a garden, colors come and go, frail azure flowing from night's outer wing, strong silent greens silently lingering, absolute lights like bath of golden snow. This is a garden. Her lips do blow upon cool flutes within white glooms and sing of harps celestial to the quivering stream, invisible faces hauntingly and slow. This is a garden time shall surely reap, and on death's blade lie many a flower curled. In other lands where other songs be sung. Yet stand they here enraptured, as among the slow, deep trees perpetual of sleep, some silver-fingered fountain steals the world. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To the dead favorite of Lu Chi. By Juna Barnes. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Drake. The sound of rustling silk is stilled. With solemn dust, the court is filled. No footfalls echo on the floor. A thousand leaves stop up her door. Her little golden drink is spilled. Her painted fan no more shall rise before her black, barbaric eyes. The scattered tea goes with the leaves, and simply crossed her yellow sleeves, 
and every day a sunset dies. Her birds no longer coo and call, the cherry blossoms fade and fall, nor ever does her shadow stir, but stares forever back at her, and through her runs no sound at all. And bending low, my falling tears drop fast against her little ears, and yet no sound comes back, and I, who used to play her tenderly, have touched her not a thousand years. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Where is Madge Then? by E. E. Cummings. Read for LibriVox.org by Christina Chu. Where's Madge then? Madge and her men? Buried with Alice in her hair, but if you ask the rain, he'll not tell where. Beauty makes terms with time and his warmth, when loveliness says sweetly, yes, to wind and cold. And how much earth is Madge worth? Inquire of the flower that sways in the autumn. She will never guess. But I know, my heart felt dead before. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Wicked Zebra by Frank Rowe Bachelder. Read for LibriVox.org. The zebra always seems malicious. He kicks and bites most all the time. I fear that he's not only vicious, but guilty of some dreadful crime. The mere suggestion makes me falter in writing of this wicked brute. Although he has escaped the halter, he wears for life a convict suit. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.